Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Suicide pods, missed it on Friday. Death from above, look out. And it's hurricane season, people. What the heck is going on? <laughs> in your grill. I forgot to set this up, so forgive me. Of course. What the heck? Well, that's it. Listen, people. The Tiger's back, and uh, I'm getting a lot of requests to get this mask off, and we're working on it. We're going to get a whole new studio view back here, and we're going to piece this together. We're going to get a little bit more interesting, and uh, we're going to switch it up for everybody. And the mask will come off. We'll have a little bit of a countdown. So what the heck's going on? Several arrested after American woman dies in first use of controversial suicide pod. Here's an image of what it is. Looks like a sea do. All right. Well, what the heck happened? Swiss police have arrested several people after a controversial futuristic-looking capsule designed to allow its occupant to kill themselves was used for the first time. Authorities said on Tuesday, well, what's the problem? It was designed for it. They set it up. Well, it wasn't a European. It wasn't even someone from Switzerland or wherever this thing is. Police in northern Canton Schlafhausen, bordering Germany, said the so-called Sarko capsule had been deployed in a wood, woods, forest, in the municipality of Merschhausen on Monday. Prosecutors in Schaffhausen have opened criminal proceedings against several people for inducing and aiding and abetting suicide. A police statement said, adding several people were detained without giving details about them or the deceased. A spokeswoman for the group behind the capsule, the last resort, said the deceased was a 64-year-old American woman who had been suffering from a severely compromised immune system. She was sick of it. She didn't want to pull the trigger herself. So she uh, went online and they were like, oh, there's these humans over here in the east and uh, they allow this stuff. So I'm just going to go for it. Well, guess what? They don't allow it. You're not allowed to help people die, which is kind of weird, right? Like, why not? Well, because it's sad. And what if someone really loves that person? What if the person's not of the right mind? Shh, you don't help people die. That's it. Oreo versus statin what the heck is this well there's a drug called lipitor and the fight against high cholesterol uh, has been uh, being fought by this drug it's a statin apparently if you go into the doctor and they're like oh you have high cholesterol it's a uh, hdl and ldl so it's like high uh, lipid i don't know or low lipid potentially density i don't know exactly what it is but anyway this pill is supposed to lower the bad one well guess what apparently it's doesn't do anything Let's have a look here. Pfizer's cholesterol-lowering statin drug Lipitor is one of the most profitable medications of all time. Globally, the lucrative statin market is projected to reach $32 billion by 2032. Yet for years, there have <clears throat> been published studies reporting that statin drugs lead to profound memory loss and diabetes, and overall are entirely worthless. As such, the studies have supplied the basis for reevaluating the guidelines for prescribing statins and theories on cholesterol in general. After all, cholesterol is essentially essential to the human body. If you had none, you would be dead. The studies have likewise questioned why more focus isn't put on maintaining good health through beneficial lifestyle habits instead of harmful statin medications. Yeah, like why are doctors always reaching for the prescription pad instead of saying, well, what do you eat in a day? What time do you go to bed? Do you have a lot of stress in your life? What's your lifestyle like? Anyway, uh, firmly revealing the absurdity of this scheme to keep Americans unhealthy on statins, a recent study published on January 22nd, 2024, has demonstrated that Nabisco's toxic Oreo cookies are two times more effective at lowering LDL cholesterol, the one they say that is bad, than high-intensity statin drugs. Holy smokes, what? <clears throat> yeah, so the truth is, is a lot of studies that are being done. Apparently, cholesterol is not what blogs your ar blogs clogs your arteries. Um causing heart disease it's actually uh helps to reduce it who would have guessed so why are people on this 
cholesterol reducing drug if cholesterol is good for us well it all came down to this thing it's like high fat or sugar which one is bad for us right well they decided that high fat was uh was worse for us than than sugar in the 80s that's basically what it was junk food harvard medical school nicholas g Norwitz, PhD, was a kinogenic and has high LDL, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol. Thank you very much. For context, many argue that LDL cholesterol is merely a surrogate marker, and prominent cardiologists are increasingly questioning its causative role in the development of heart disease. So there you go. The medical establishment is always to be trusted and never to be questioned, because they're always correct. And what about the uh, SSRIs for depression? That they also give you for weight loss and stuff. You go to the doctor, like, yeah, I got a bit of weight on, I'm not feeling so good. They're like, well, these antidepressants work great for weight loss. And it's like, why? Probably because you turn to a drone and forget to eat. Anyway, they uh, reduce depression by how much, you say? The big goose egg. All right, scientists, unlikely new disease surveillance tool <clears throat> used condoms. Well, why not? That sounds great. They're already checking waste water to see how much virus is in there. Hi, it's Jason in Melbourne. Scrounging through trash for used condoms is an unusual way to conduct disease surveillance, but the insights are revealing before I explain. <clears throat> okay, they're talking about Johnson Johnson baby powder. Yeah, that stuff, talcum powder, apparently caused cancer. There you go. Boom. So, you know, companies and the medical establishment are always to be trusted, never to be questioned. You just follow the science. But if you really want to know, you follow the money. Researching rubbers, the specimens were unlikely and the collection methods may have been unorthodox, but tests on almost 21,000 condoms discarded in 16 countries have yielded important findings on the way MPOX spreads, yeah, through homosexual anal intercourse, typically. For a study published in the Lancet Infectious Diseases last month, sanitary workers and members of the public plucked use prophylactics from waste bins in brothels, toilets, parks, office blocks, shopping malls, motels, gas stations, entertainment venues. The rubbers were collected in Cambodia, India, Indonesia, Laos, Madagascar, Maldives, Mozambique, Myanmar, Nepal, Pakistan, Papua New Guinea, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Timor-Leste, Vietnam from December of last year through this April after a global MPOX outbreak that began in 22 had already receded. Yeah, what did they find? Men's semen. Men's anal discharge blood i would assume because it's disgusting anyway that's what's going on and guess what they found out it's transmitted through skin to skin contact typically homosexual sex and go get the vaccine because they got one for that anyway analyzing the virus's genetic sequence scientists recognize specific mutations that enable them to trace the pathogen spread across the countries okay so they say okay well it came from africa and then there's a guy who went to a pig party in thailand um, and then um, some guy at that pig party was pakistani and he went back to pakistan but before he went there he stopped in nepal to see his family and it just spread that's how that's what happened further tests enabled scientists to measure the risk of co-transmission of mpox with other infections especially genital herpes, HIV, hepatitis C virus, and gonorrhea. So it is a 100%. It's a sexually transmitted disease. That's it. All right. Top five regrets people have on their deathbeds. What they can teach us about living healthily, fulfilled lives from an internal medicine doctor. All right. So this guy here is probably on the cancer ward. He works in oncology, something like that. Five regrets, she says, sorry, People often express, I didn't spend enough time with the people I love. Yeah, 100%. Especially if you have a, a parent that passes away or something like that, you 100% immediately feel uh, the loss. Like, beyond anything you could ever experience, other than a child, perhaps. Um, yeah. So, cherish your time with the people that you love, and look them right in the eyes until they say, what? And then just tell them that you love them. Like, you know, I almost bring a tear to my own eye. What a moment you will share. Just try it at home with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. Brother, sister might get a little bit awkward, but whatever. Tell them you love them. I worked too much and missed out on life. Yeah, 40 hours is way too much already. Tiger parks it at 20. I let fear control my decisions and didn't take risks. Yeah, what are you afraid of? 
YOLO, you only live once. Like, that's the best saying ever, and as stupid as it is, YOLO, YOLO, whatever, it's true. You only live once, so don't waste it. Don't be afraid. Go talk to the missus who you got a crush on. Throw it out there. What, are you going to not do it and then live your life wondering what happened? You got some extra money? Throw it in some crypto. Check out Sigma Tiger Trade. We talk about finance all the time, all for beginner stuff. How does it work? How to look at a chart. It's the basics, right? Don't be afraid. Fear is the devil. God is love. Um, I wish I'd been braver in the face of uncertainty or opportunity. Yeah, don't be afraid. Again, fear, living in fear. I focused too much on the future and lost touch with the present. Yeah, living in uh, anxiety. Some people live in depression. All they do is think about the past. Oh, I should have, I could have, I would have, and then you miss any possible opportunity because you're wrapped up in depression. You can't even move. Anxiety is you're too afraid to move because what if? Oh, chicken little. Anyway, be a Sigma Tiger. Don't be afraid to be alone. Spend time alone, okay? Spend time by yourself. Get to know yourself. Live in silence. Listen to a bit of classical music. Think and reflect. It's very important. And exercise. Go outside. Tell people you love them. Spread love to receive love. Simple. Sigma rules, man. Write it down. Meet the people suing Ozempic Maker for wrecking their bodies. I will never eat solid food again. Okay, well, Ozempic, it's a diabetes drug that apparently, like, uh, jacks up your insulin so you just shit all your weight out. Pardon my French. La poupou. All right, so anyway, hundreds of Americans have jumped on a multi-state lawsuit alleging that the makers of Ozempic and... Mujaro caused them life-altering injuries. Uh, the drug Ozempic, I believe it comes from the Netherlands, the factory or whatever, the maker. The suit was filed against Novo Nordics and Eli Lilly, the two pharma giants that have raked in billions thanks to the blockbuster weight loss meds. Ohio native and grandmother of seven, Dana Fillmore, can no longer eat solid foods and has to blend her meals. Yikes. Uh, Louisville's Jacqueline Balbao, threw up so much she became dangerously malnourished yikes so is it worth it tennessee oil rig worker bob tuttle was looking to lose a little bit of weight you know a little chubby around the edges forced to quit his job because the stomach pain was unbearable yikes and philadelphia born debbie kurtz believed she would never make it out of the hospital alive and just to get rid of a few pounds because you're lazy that's the only reason i don't have time you don't really need to do anything you just literally like do jumping jacks push-ups and sit-ups and reduce your caloric intake and you'll lose weight go for a walk boom 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 don't eat anything else like boom like i could do it i could take 30 days right now take a picture of my body and do exactly that and only eat good stuff and then show you the results and you guys would be like oh my god it actually works yeah totally they and many others argue in the suit that Lily and Novo failed to warn its millions of eager customers about the very real risks of severe gastrointestinal injury including stomach paralysis gallbladder issues colon removal and more as well as making misleading statements about the drug's safety. Yeah, of course, because they were on the big money, the money drive. And there's no studies on this. They didn't know. They knew how it reacted with people with diabetes. Dana Fillmore, 55-year-old diabetic, was uncomfortable with the prospect of having to stick herself with a needle every week when her doctor suggested she try Ozempic to manage her type 2 diabetes. Okay, different. She was actually taking it for its intended purposes. For about two years, the medicine did what it was approved to do, lower her blood sugar levels. But in the last six months, that she was on it, the severe nausea kicked in, gradually worsened, and she had to burn through her vacation time to recuperate. Devastating. Uh, it got to a point where she became scared to eat solid foods because of a few bites she would send her to the bathroom. Yeesh. Uh, she told, yeah, Montezuma's revenge all up in your, uh, in your gaff. The solids are really difficult on me. My body just rejects it. So what's going on? Like, her gut biome is non-existent. She's basically, like, destroyed her uh the ecosystem of her stomach yeah so she needs to go on like an elimination diet and just slowly introduce things back in start with some probiotics i'm not a doctor i don't know that's just my personal opinion that's probably what i would do transgender muslim wannabe firefighter requests court allow him to be euthanized after being charged with making terroristic threats yeah well just send him over to switzerland a man who identifies as a muslim woman is on trial after threatening to murder public safety officials in Jasper, Mississippi. Tanya Morgan, 64, has now demanded the court allow him to be euthanized. And that's the thing, like, you know, is it him, is it her, what? It's not me. The saga behind Morgan's arrest has been covered extensively by the Laurel Leader Call, an independent locally owned 
outlet, which first reported on Morgan's threats in June of this year. According to the outlet, the situation first unfolded after Morgan was refused membership at a Rose Hill Volunteer Fire Department, something he attributed to discrimination on the grounds of his alleged Muslim faith, <clears throat> or perhaps they didn't feel like he was physically up to it. Enraged by the rejection, Morgan showed up to a June 4th meeting at the Jasper County Emergency Management Office, where he engaged in an altercation with firefighters. After being asked to leave, Morgan made several frivolous 9-11 calls that culminated in him threatening to open fire into multiple county and city buildings. Morgan was arrested and taken to Jasper County Jail, where he belongs. Totally unhinged individual. Good Lord. Australian Women's Football Club with five trans-identified male players continues to dominate competition. Wins women's championship match. Whoa. Hang on a minute now. Five players. Well, how many players are on a pitch? You know what I mean? That's almost the full pitch. And a, a team based. And a, look at this picture. Good lord. It looks like an adult versus a child. An Australian trans inclusive Premier League women's football team with multiple male players has scored another win yesterday against a women's team. The Flying Bats Football Club will now progress into the Women's Championship after defeating the Leichhardt Saints 3-2. The Flying Bats FC, which has at least five confirmed <clears throat> male participants, perhaps some suspected as well, emerged victorious yesterday during Round 2 of the Premier League Football New South Wales. The FNSW Champion of Champions knockout competition. The Saints, an all-female team, has now lost the opportunity to compete in the finals leaving the Bats one step closer to winning the women's title, according to the FNSW website. The Champion of Champions tournament is one of the most prestigious tournaments in the footballing calendar, with champions from each association pitted against each other in a battle for supremacy. There you go. <laughs> Yike. Yee. During the game yesterday, one of the trans-identified males on the Flying Bats team received one red card and two yellow cards. So that would be like an ejection, wouldn't it? Two yellow cards is a red card? Am I wrong? Indicating serious in-game infractions for which he was ultimately pulled from the match completely. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Pull them all, I say. I mean, you got to have a league that's not the women's league. It's got to be the co-ed league. It has to be. And anyone can play. It's the free league. Free for all. Not women's league. Asterix. Exclusive details. Shocking trial in Germany reveals that a trans-identified male procured children for a millionaire pedophile to abuse. What? I mean, it just keeps getting worse. A trans-identified male is standing trial along with a millionaire from Munich for the horrific sexual abuse of a prepubescent girls. The case has sent shockwaves through Germany due to the depravity and well-organized nature of the pedophilic acts. Really, though, is it sending shockwaves through Germany? Because we've covered Germany in the past, and in, that place is disgusting. It's deplorable. Like, they had, like, little feely rooms for kids. Like, you know, you send your little girl there and a bunch of older kids in the daycare, take her into the dark room and have a go. And it was it got shut down. Anyway, whatever. Germany. It's the it's the beginning of all depravity. Check it out. Back ger back during World War II. That's what I'm not saying anything about Hitler, but like that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to shut down that thing. The book burnings and all that that they were doing were pornography. It was all about trans. Like there was this guy, a Jewish guy who lived in Berlin, who had this big uh, medical clinic where it was all about surgeries and stuff like that like they pioneered it the jews can you believe it <clears throat> due to strict privacy laws in germany the press has anonymized the identities of both the men involved but redux can exclusively reveal that the 81 year old millionaire at the center of the case is helmut reiner dorsch who lived in an expansive villa in Pulak, munich his transgender compatriot known only as Arbend, would procure young girls for dorsch taboos delivering them to the man's Pulak village. So, you know, just Epstein with a transgender instead of uh, a media heiress. Disgusting. These people with power and money. Judge rules in favor of gender-affirming surgery for transgender inmate who strangled infant. Of course, he deserves it. He must be affirmed. 42-year-old Autumn Cordelion, totally a real name, serving time for murder of stepdaughter, in 2023, Indiana statute blocked gender-affirming surgery. Last week, a judge ruled in inmate's favor. Attorney General Rokita plans to appeal. Let's hope so. Uh, yeah, so the judge ruled in favor of transgender inmates seeking gender-affirming surgery. Yikes. Anyway, at the time, the murder of Corleone was known as Jonathan Richardson. 
Corleone is serving a 55-year sentence with the Indiana Department of Corrections. A lawsuit filed by attorneys with the ACLU shows Corleone was diagnosed with gender dysphoria in 2020 and takes female hormones. Well, we must continue the affirmation or else it's against their human rights. And then he's going to transfer to another prison, perhaps. Does he want bottom and top surgery? Or just top? It's important questions. IDF begins bombing Hezbollah's central headquarters located under residential buildings in the heart of Beirut. All right, let's tune in. Let's check this out. Huge explosion. Yeah, just like <clears throat> a cascade of bombs. Uh, yeah, so that's in Lebanon, Beirut. So what exactly happened there? Well, they got him. Israel confirms. It killed Hezbollah leader Hassan. Nasrallah in an underground headquarters. So he was underground, uh, hiding like a little rat that he is, a little murderer, terrorist, you know, and he murdering people because like he has ideas that are different than other people and other mu people must be crushed. Anyway, the Israel Defense Forces killed Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah in an airstrike on the Iran-backed terrorist group's Beirut headquarters. Last night, in a precision strike on Hezbollah's terrorist headquarters in a neighborhood in Beirut, the IDF eliminated the leader of Hezbollah's terrorist organization, Hassan Nasrallah. <clears throat> I can now confirm this to you. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah, so he's gone. Confirmed death. Uh, death from above. How Israel wiped out Hezbollah's chiefs one by one as assassination of terror leader leaves Middle East on knife edge. Yeah, absolutely. It's on the knife's edge. We have no idea what's going to happen. It's popping off. People are worried about ground troops going on over there. So they had the cell phone thing, which they denied, or the pager thing, the walkie-talkies, and then this precision bunker bomb where they totally just eradicated these rats. Hassan Nasrallah, Ibrahim Akil, Fuaj Kur, Ali Karaki, Wissam Al-Tawal, Ahmed Wahabi, Taleb Sami, Abdullah, Muhammad Nasir, and Abdul Al-Rida. Anyway, uh, missile barrage, we've seen it. It happened, confirmed death, pivotal night. He was reigning for 32 years. So, uh, yeah, they're obviously scrambling around, looking for the cheese now. What do they do? Well, uh, let's see what happened. Uh, Post-bombing, they went in. Obviously, people knew he was there, and they were like, let's go check it out. You can see how deep the penetration was. Unbelievable. Bonker buster. Look from outside. Assuming there used to be a building there, similar to the ones in the background. Yeah, there's the foundation, parts of the building, wiped out. So there's no surviving that whatsoever, impossible. And there's an image of the guy again. Uh, and apparently the way he died was suffocating in agony. So anyone who really, really hates terrorism and hates the Hezbollah, I'm sure you're happy to hear that. Unbelievable suffocating in agony well uh yeah i mean unlikely anyone would have survived that the suffocating in agony would have been a very short term thing no doubt you guys seen it medical and security sources told reuters that hassan Nas body had no direct wounds which would almost likely point to blunt trauma as the cause of death collapsing building on top of your head there it is boom two thousand pound bunker buster bombs and uh, they dropped 15 of those. 
Israel, or sorry, Israel, Iran warns Hezbollah leaders death will not go unavenged. Well, apparently they set a bunch of rockets over to an airport where Netanyahu was landing. No information regarding that. The martyrdom of the great Nazrahalala. Anyway, whatever. These people are psychopaths. Satellite images show Russian missile test ends in disaster. The RS-28 Sarmat was designed to strike targets in the U.S. and Europe. Long-range missile. Short-range disaster. Didn't work. Major fail for the Russians. Embarrassing. Absolutely. Uh, satellite photos show a Russian missile designed to strike targets in the United States and Europe exploded during a test launch. Nothing to worry about then. Unless you're China... With launch into Pacific Ocean, China tests its long-range ICBM that could reach U.S. mainland. Ooh, yikes. And look at it. <clears throat> the People's Liberation Army launched its first known intercontinental ballistic missile test. <clears throat> In 44 years on Wednesday morning, sending the ICBM into the Pacific Ocean. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there, that's all we have for you on that one. New Chinese nuclear attack submarine sank, though. Perhaps they hit it with their ICBM. Satellite imagery show that China's newest nuclear-powered attack submarine sank alongside a pier while under construction. A U.S. military official confirmed to CBS News on Thursday. So they got the missiles, but they don't got the, the subs. The sinking of China's first Zhou-class submarine represents a setback for Beijing as it continues to build out the world's largest navy. Yikes. You don't need an ICBM if you can put a ship close to a country. Uh, has Codecom woke? Iconic American company in hot water over can personalization that won't allow conservative phrases. Well, that's pretty much woke is. Uh, left or nothing. The updated version now bans all monikers that are trademarked, political in nature, names of countries, celebrities, religious figures, as well as anything that could be considered offensive for other reasons. Personalizer tool said, yeah, so what's offensive? MAGA, obviously, like, not allowed to say that. Uh, so anyway, someone was trying to get Trump 2024. Looks like the name you request is not approved. Not allowed to have Trump 2024 on your, uh, Coke can. Alright, Pope vows to root out the scourge of sexual abuse after unusually frank plea from Belgian PM. So what's going on here? Uh, Pope Francis has pledged to root out the scourge of clerical sexual abuse after Belgium's Prime Minister urged him in an unusual frank terms to take concrete action. Okay, so you are committed to a fair, equitable approach, but the road is still long, the Prime Minister told Francis. It's If something is, goes wrong, we can't accept cover-ups if it harms the precious work done by everyone. And that's why words are not enough today. Concrete steps need to be taken. The victims must be heard. Uh, they must occupy a central place. They have the right to the truth. Yeah, so arrest the pedophile priests. Jail them. Don't move them around like you have done. Admonish them. Say, like, you know, this is a bad thing. Don't condone it. Because basically that's what you're doing. If you're moving the priests around and you're saying, oh, no, just, you know, we sent them away for treatment, therapy, you know, they're okay. They're not okay. Pope expels a bishop and nine others. People from Peru movement over sadistic abuses. Okay, so he's getting to work down in the south. Perhaps these are uh, ones that used to be in Belgium. Uh, Pope Francis took the unusual decision Wednesday, Wednesday to expel 10 people, a bishop, priests, and lay people from a troubled Catholic movement in Peru after a Vatican investigation uncovered sadistic abuses of power, authority, and spirituality. The move against the leadership of the Solidatium Christiani Vitae, or uh, Solidatium of Christian Life, followed Francis' decision last month to expel the group's founder, Luis Figari, after he was found to have sodomized his recruits. What's up with that? I mean, it happens in church and stuff, but it's the Catholic Church specifically. Like, well, uh, there's a guy, what's his name? Peter Thiel. He's a homosexual billionaire. And he said that, like, basically to move up within the church, you must be gay. You have to have that against you. Like, they had sex with you, backdoored you, and uh, they broke the glass ceiling while they were pumping you up. Right? 
The statement was astonishing because it listed abuses uncovered by the Vatican investigation that have rarely, if ever, been punished canonically, such as hacking someone's communications and cited the people the Pope held responsible. So, okay, there's some sort of conspiracy going on here. According to the statement, the Vatican investigators uncovered physical abuses, including with sadism and violence, sect-like abuses of consciousness, spiritual abuse, abuses of authority, economical abuses in administering church money, and the abuse in the exercise of the apostolate of journalism. So, uh, just laying down the hammer. Go ahead and do it everywhere, Pope. Do it. Be a man and do it. And everyone will be like, okay, we, we maybe we can trust the church again. Not that, like, religion is good. Jesus is good. Religion, maybe not. Flooding, evacuations after Helene plows western North Carolina. Officials say stay off the roads. Absolutely. Flash flood. Here's an image. Doesn't look great. If you've ever been in a hurricane, uh, like, you know, it's not fun. If you've ever been in a flood, you're likely to uh, not have survived. So what's happening here? Let's get a look. Here's an image of one dude's house just totally getting annihilated, or at least his property. I'm okay. My car's gone. I'm okay. It's okay. The, the, everything's it's okay. gone. It's, it's okay. all gone. It's okay. Amazing. Like, the reaction. Just listen. My car's gone. I'm okay. It's okay. The, uh, everything's it's okay. gone. It's, it's all okay. gone. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, good woman. Thankfully, she's next to him holding his hand because that is obviously terrible. Let's have another look. North Carolina, cut off from the rest of the world. We have towns that don't exist anymore. Chimney Rock is, is gone. The city of Asheville is cut off from the world. This, this is not an exaggeration. All the bridges leading into the city have been washed away. They have no food, no power, no water, no internet, no cell service. They don't even have radio. It's a, com it's a complete, like, dead zone. Uh, no one knows what's going on in there. I don't think I'm being dramatic when I say that this is a Hurricane Katrina level event. Uh, there was a woman in my town who called for an ambulance, and the ambulance got stranded. And they were stranded for, like, 24 hours, and to my knowledge, the patient didn't make it. Pe Dang. People are dying. Pray for the uh, souls of the lost. I've been running the generator for the last three days, and we're starting to run out of gas. And this is on Highway 123, heading from Aisley to, uh, to Greenville. And this was a one-mile-long line to get gas because they were the only people we knew around that had gas left. I got all the way to the end, and they were out. They had no gas. We checked every gas station in Pickens and Easley and in Liberty. Nothing. And I don't know what I'm going to do when I run out of gas, i tell you that much. Get your gun because people are going to come looking for it. All right, let's have another look. This is what's going on. Uh, where is this? Biolab in Georgia. Not far. Let's have a look. Yeah, you need to get out of town. Roll up those windows and just continue on out of town because for the next few days, especially if you get some rain, look out. Thank you for joining the Sigma Tiger. Like we said at the beginning of the broadcast, the mask is going to be coming off. We're going to be doing a little bit of a reformatting here. Tell me what you think, what you'd like to see. Maybe I'll take your input. Maybe I won't. Sigma Tiger, signing out.